Hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're ready for a little bit of fall. This project is awesome, I think. I'm a little biased because I made it. But we're going to use a bunch of stencils by Sean Petit. I'll link them all below and I definitely want you to let me know what you think about this piece. I will actually put a blog post on my blog this week and it will show you the piece uh, that I found for inspiration for it. So I pulled out an MDF board and this is a big one. I think it's a uh, 16 by 12. I'll put the measurements below and I'm going to put down my collage papers with my matte medium and that's usually where I start. So just giving it a good coat on my MDF board and I'm going to put down these collage papers. I've got some papers from an old dictionary. I have some pick pieces from a music book and I thought I was going to use some of that uh, pattern paper. You know what you would cut out to make a pattern with? I don't know if anyone does sewing like that anymore, but um, I was going to and I changed my mind. Uh, I do that often, change my mind. And so just putting these down so that I'm creating something on the um, MDF board. And here are just some pages from an old magazine that I have. So getting everything stuck down and making sure that we have a nice background to work with. Yeah, this piece turned out really neat. And um, I have to tell you, it is a little bit longer video. I totally apologize, but there's a lot to it. And I even left out the shading. And next week on Tuesday, I will um, do the video of just the shading because it takes me so long to shade a big piece like this. I didn't want to bore the people with it that didn't want to watch it. But then some people are like, oh, that's the hardest part. I, I don't like the shading that's difficult for me. So I will have that for next week's video and that will be um, good for some and not so good for others, but there's lots of videos that you can watch out there, so I'm sure you'll find something. And it gives me a chance to catch up. I'm trying to get ahead of the game a little bit here. Um, back to the piece. I'm using this piece of wallpaper and it's got a wood grain pattern to it. And it has so much texture to it. It is just really an amazing piece of wallpaper. This is all I have, one piece left. And you can see I'm trying to make the most of it to see that I could um, have enough for this piece. I wanted this piece of wood to look like a wooden table for my centerpiece that I'm going to put on it. And it's going to be a beautiful fall centerpiece with some pumpkins and some uh, pine cones and a birdhouse. And yeah, it turned out pretty cool, I thought. So here I'm going to create my background. I'm gonna push all of this text a little bit back so that it's not so bold and I'm using my gesso of course and just giving it a coat. Now I didn't have to do the bottom portion because I'm going to put down that um, wood grain wallpaper and you won't see the bottom part so I'm just going to let that dry a little bit and then I'm going to add some ball colors to the background and what I'm doing here is going to be kind of a stencil resist. So we're going to put down these, um, I have an orange, a gold, and a, a biscotto is the color. And I'll link them all in my blog. I usually put the colors of the paint in the blog post for you. And then I have a real dark brown that I'm going to cover it all up with, and that is bittersweet chocolate. Who doesn't like a little bit of bittersweet chocolate, huh? Yum! So I'm putting little drops down, like I said, 
with my acrylic paint and these are just real um, inexpensive paint I have a Delta Ceram coat I have a apple barrel I believe it is and I'm using my um, Michaels credit card and I'm just scraping the paint and adding it to the background with that credit card and just giving it some cool texture and getting the paint on the piece so I hope you're enjoying fall where you live we are in full fall season right now fall is my very very favorite season and I'm sure you've heard me saying that before I'm going to link a um, video above here um, that I did last fall and it is a pumpkin piece and I think that you might like it so I'll go ahead and put that above here so you can go and check it out from last year just adding some of that orange down and that orange I thought I was using an inexpensive um, acrylic paint but actually what I did grab was my very favorite by Dina Wakely and it's called Cheddar. I absolutely love this color and during the fall season I have a really hard time not reaching for it. But it works for me. So giving this all a dry with my heat gun and then we're going to cover the whole thing up with this bittersweet chocolate you're thinking oh my gosh what are you doing but trust me it works it turns out really cool and we're going to use a stencil by Sean Petit and it's called falling leaves and again I will link that below so that you can check it out and if there's any fall uh, stencils you need I would head over to Sean's um, store and make sure you pick those up because I use them again and again and even through some of the winter seasons when you just need a few leaves in the background it works out really well and you can see that this stencil is well loved I'm putting it right on top of the brown paint there didn't even give it a chance to dry and I'm using my damp towel and I'm picking up the paint through the stencil so I call this a reverse stencil technique I don't know if that's what it's actually called but that's what I'm calling it and um, you see that I did cut this stencil in half I did that because um, I take it to some of my hands-on workshops and I wanted to speed up the class a little bit and let more than one person use my stencil so I'm loving loving how the uh, stencil pulled that brown paint right off to the um, background there you see that on the left so I'm gonna take my stuff to the sink and I'm gonna clean it up and let that dry look at that I think it's gorgeous I'm going to put down my wallpaper now I'm going to use my matte gel because this stuff is kind of thick and I wanted to make sure that we had a good stick down and um, yeah like I said that's a really cool wallpaper that I had in my stash I wish I had more of it um, but you never know I'll come I'll come up with something you know I'm not worried I've got plenty of stuff to play with so putting down that matte gel putting down my scraps on the left and right side and then I'm going to put the one big piece that I have over the top and I think it looks like a table what do you think so we're not gonna worry about the edges hanging off right yet we will get to those when everything is dry we don't want to pull that back up just making sure I have a real good coat there and now we're gonna work on some of the elements I gotta turn my fan off here I, I apologize I sometimes forget to do that and you can hear it in the background sorry about that so I'm pulling out all kinds of things and here are some baby wipes that I used in a different project and I put it through my big shot and cut out these leaves by using a die 
And here I had a birdhouse that I cut out of another piece of wallpaper that I had in my stash. And I thought that was a neat element. And now here I've got this um, pumpkin stencil by Sean Petit and it's called Pumpkin Variety. And I'm going to use some of these um, papers that I have in my stash. And I had just been wiping paint on them. So there's some that have oranges, there's some that have uh, a little bit of blue, green, brown. They're, they're beautiful papers. And what I want to do is just push some of that color to the background and add a little bit of orange and I am making a base for my pumpkins. Now you can see the text through the paint that I have just put down and it makes this pumpkin so cool. I'm just using my pencil and drawing the one line that you see for the ridges of the pumpkin and then the outside edge of the pumpkin and I'm going to cut them out. So that's how I got my pumpkins. And I'm just going to use some of this paper here that I had been putting um, paint on when I was doing some jelly prints and cleaning off my brayer and just added a little bit more of a different color of orange and doing the same technique. So it works out really cool. You can use Sean's stencils for lots and lots of different things. And look, we've already shown two different techniques, different techniques using her stencils. Something different besides the ordinary. And this is a obviously a piece of music sheet that had some paper on it some paint on it, excuse me, and I'm adding some more color to get another pumpkin. Now you'll notice a little bit later in the video that this pumpkin um, I cut down because I wanted it to be a little bit different shape. Here I'm using a pine cone stencil by Sean Petit again. I'm using that same brown that I used um, for the background and I'm just using a makeup sponge to push that paint through the stencil. And I noticed that I did not have my paint shook up, so it wasn't a very good coverage. And I'm putting it down on a little spot of paper that I already had uh, a different color of brown on it. And it makes really, really cute pine cones. I'm just going to cut those out with my scissors after they dry of course wiping off this stencil and we're going to go on to the next on to the next project or next piece i'm going to use that mason jar and we're going to make a colorful piece of paper so that we can do the same technique with the mason jars wasn't sure which size I wanted. I went for the big one and it seemed to work out just fine. Now this is a color of paint that I have been using a lot, a lot, a lot. It's almost empty. And it is by Apple Barrel Colors. This is a really, really old paint that I've had. But the color is blue stoneware and it is really nice. So um, something you might want to think about adding to your stash. Just this really neat um, kind of smoky grayish blue color. And I'm just going to put down the basics of the stencil. And I am going to cut all of that out with my scissors. So here I've got my pieces all laid out on my background. And it looks terrible, of course, but they're just sitting there and I'm going to take a picture with my phone and I'm setting my phone up to the left there. And then I'm going to go ahead and take off these pieces from the background, kind of set it how it's going. And then I'm going to paste everything down with my 
Um, I did matte gel because there are so many different textures going on here. I'm going to start with this birdhouse and put it down and I'm just using a dry soft brush going underneath and over the top. Now this is a, kind of a long section here and I apologize you can kind of zoom through it if you want but um, there's a lot of figuring and a lot of planning that went into the composition portion of this piece and I didn't want to leave it out because I thought that it was important. So I'm kind of clustering everything together and seeing how I wanted it laid out and I keep looking at my phone that has the picture of it and seeing what's over the top and what's underneath. And again, um, those leaves turned out so cool and that was a used baby wipe that I had wiped up paint with in a different project. If I can go back and remember what project it was, I'll try and link it for you. And um, I saved it because I loved the colors. They turned out so amazing. And when I thought of this project, I thought, oh yeah, I know exactly what I'm going to do with those leaves. So I'm going underneath everything and over the top. And like I said, this takes a little bit of thinking back and forth to get the background the way you want it. Now, when I'm putting these leaves down, they were really kind of difficult to lay flat. So you see here in a few leaves, it kept curling up on me. And I thought, well, obviously the leaf wants to be curled up, so let it be curled up. You know how the leaves get all crinkly and dried in the fall? So I started moving the leaves and giving it that extra added texture to the piece by just kind of crumpling it up a little bit. And it really is neat. When I showed it to my friends, it was kind of fun because the first thing they wanted to do is touch it. They wanted to touch the texture in the leaves and touch the texture in the table with the wood grain. And um, it, it was kind of neat to see them do that because I thought the very same thing when I was doing it. Oh, this is going to add some really, really neat texture. So I think this is the one that um, I kept trying to get flat. And I'm like, well, that's silly. It doesn't need to be flat. We want the texture. So yeah, I'm sticking it down. I've got those pine cones there I thought went cool. And I'm just going back and forth. This one I wanted to be underneath the pumpkin. It took a bunch of figuring. But I really liked how it turned out. And at this point, I'm going, oh gosh, this is really not very cool at all. But um, once you get the shading in and everything dries, and then you can see um, how just fun and amazing it turned out, it, it turned out good. Now I'm clipping off a little bit of that leaf so I can make it look like it's coming from behind. And I just couldn't figure out how to do it, but in the end, I got it. It worked out. And like I said, uh, I'm sorry, I, I took the shading of this piece out, but it will be my video for next week. So next week's video might be a little small, uh, smaller, shorter, um, but I just did the shading so that you can see the piece being shaded. And here's, oh, look, I pulled that whole leaf off, and there's where I have the idea of, oh, yeah, let's make it crumbled like like the leaf and here I'm just adding more and more of that matte gel and making it just really cool lots of texture now I know exactly where this piece is going to go um, my husband and I have purchased a 
um, vacation rental by owner by own vacation rental by owner um, in a town called Stoddard, Wisconsin. So right outside of La Crosse, it's about a 25 minute drive one way to get there. And it is river view. It's not right on the river, but it's across the street from the river. And it is a four bedroom place. And we take ownership of that property on Thursday. So um, we can go in and decorate and get everything ready to go on the weekend and then it will be up for rental so i um, super super excited and i thought that this piece would look really cool down there maybe um maybe you know in the entryway or something and just a little uh, candle by it where um, the candle can be on a timer of course we don't want to have any problems with fire down there and um, I thought it would be real inviting for the guests that we have and our first guests are coming um, the second week of October so it's going to give us a little time to check out what we have there and what we need and get it all cozy for for our guests I'm really excited about it and it's going to be a great fun adventure I'm thinking so I think that's where this piece will go. This will be one that I, I don't think I'll part with. I just absolutely love the leaves in the background and all the texture that came out of this piece. So I'm just sealing down all of the edges there and I'm kind of crumpling up those leaves so they look more realistic. And I think it is a cool, cool piece. You can let me know what you think. All right, so everything is dry and I could not wait to get sh uh, shading on this. But I wanted to show you that I did put down some of that yellow and, um, sorry, orange, just with my finger and I put it over the pumpkins to add some texture and dimension and I didn't have that part uh, videoed so I just showed you that I just used my finger and I'm doing the same process over this mason jar adding some white gesso and just giving it some cool um, highlight so it makes it look really rounded and real uh, realistic yeah so I just wanted to show you, I just used my finger, nothing fancy about it. And I could not wait, like I said, to get shading on this piece because I knew that it was just going to come alive. And I did do a little bit of shading and then I'm like, oh, I forgot my um, burnt umber wash. And I really wanted to do that because sometimes when you do that, burnt umber wash you um, really tone everything down and you pull all the colors together and it just makes it all, all all is one so unifies the piece that might be the word I'm looking for so here you see I start shading and then I'm like oop I shouldn't have done that so I'm using a water soluble product that is my charcoal pencil so no worries I just took my damp towel and went ahead and did a few wipes and wiped off what I had already started so it's not going to be a problem at all Yeah, you can see I'm really going to town. It's it's like, yeah, this is going to be really cool, really cool. And like I said, there is a lot of shading to do um, on this piece. Oops. And um, I really enjoy shading because I think that's very calming and, and it just brings everything together and makes it pop. So I really like it. Some people don't like it and that's where they struggle. But that is how you get better at it. You practice, practice, practice. 
So here's where I was like, oh no, I shouldn't have done the shading yet for those. I just wiped up as much as I could and not too worried about it. Getting out my uh, burnt umber that I always use and putting down some water on my palette there on the right with that paint using my soft brush and I'm going to go over the whole piece with my burnt umber wash as I love to do and yes you'll see how it just totally changes the piece. Getting in all those nooks and crannies and that's where that wash really comes in handy because you know the torn pieces that I had on that wallpaper for the table well it just blended right in with the um, brown wash and um, it just made it seamless so here I'm just adding some water and letting that paint run getting in all of those nooks and crannies and just making it yummy dabbing it off with my damp towel and like I said I've been using um, old bandanas just I just like the texture of the cloths so much better than those microfiber cloths and now can you see that white halo around everything that I believe is because I used matte gel well I'm not gonna worry about it now I'm going to worry about this big pile of paint that I have over to my right you know how I hate to waste my products I'm going to take it and just put it all over these um, music sheets and here I'm just going to use my hand and I'm going to use some water and spray and oh yeah it makes these music sheets all nice and vintage and put down some of that extra gesso that I had over to the side and you know that you'll see these papers again in the future. Just couldn't bear wasting that whole puddle of um, burnt umber paint. So I'll set those aside to dry and we'll use them again in a different uh, project. Okay, so what next? Now I'm going to use this stencil by Sean Petit and put down this uh, pattern there in the middle and to me it kind of resembled plaid and I needed to put a little bit of black up in the corners and around on the borders it was just calling to me and I really really loved how it turned out it just like I said um, reminded me of plaid and what's better in the fall than some plaid so yeah I had never used that portion of the stencil before so I think that's really super fun when you can use something that's been in your stash for a long time and you pull it out and you see it just to be wow that never occurred to me that it should be plaid but yeah so I will link that stencil below again and there'll be links there if you want to shop at Sean's uh, store then uh, I'm sure she would love to have you. I'm going to give that a little bit of a dry because I didn't want to smear it when I do all of my shading. <clears throat> Just giving it a quick dry and now I can go to the shading I show you a little bit here um, just getting my stuff together making sure that I have everything I need I pulled out my brown stabilo pencil and why I did that is because um, Number one, it's brown, and there's lots and lots of brown in this piece, and I was kind of afraid that the charcoal would be way too dark. Um, I do use a lot of charcoal in the shading process, but when there are some big uh, ridges in the piece, 
and ridges I mean the wallpaper is thicker than some other some other things um, you need to kind of get in that edge and the stabilo allows you to do that because you can get it wet and then it's a watercolor so that's what I'm doing I'm dabbing it to the right in the water and then taking it and kind of outlining anything that has those really big ridges because you don't want to see that white outline edge if that makes sense to you and if it doesn't make sense just leave a comment and have me explain it a little bit better to you but that is why I got out my brown Stabilo pencil because you can add water to that and then push it right in that edge and you don't have that white showing through and then after that is all dry then I will shade it with the charcoal and then we're going to use some pan pastels and then we're going to do our black border our black edge yeah lots and lots of fun techniques in this piece and while I have you talking about techniques, I am working on an online class. I know everyone's been trying to um, do online classes for people. And it's a big deal because you can't go anywhere. I can't teach my workshops. I miss all of my people that I would have classes with. So I've hunkered down and I've been working day and night on this online class and the first one I'm going to do will be probably uh, the first week of October and it's going to be something that you can take on your own and we're going to do 12 artist trading cards if you know what those are a lot of um, creators will trade them and um, we're going to do 12 different backgrounds, mixed media backgrounds on each of the cards. And then on the back of the cards, you will be able to write down what you did in the technique. And we're going to adhere them together with a binder ring. And you're going to have a little uh, piece of art that you've made and then it's going to be a reference for you when you're stuck and you don't know how to get that blank page going for you. You'll just grab one of those, you'll turn it over, you'll say, oh, this is what I got to do and away you will be going. So if you're interested in that, send me a comment for sure or you can email me. All the links will be down below and I will put you on a list and as soon as I am ready to show you that uh, class I will make sure that I get you all the information. I'm thinking it's going to be very very affordable because it's my first one and I want everyone to be able to afford it so that you can um, give me some feedback and let me know what you thought of my first professional online course. It has taken me a bit to do it. So um, it is no small feat to teach someone a computer program. And I'm in my 50s and computers are not my strong suit, but boy, I'm sure getting smart at it. I had to have to admit that. So I'm just shading underneath all of this um, centerpiece because there's going to be a lot of dark underneath and a lot of shadowing and just by putting the shading underneath the centerpiece super cool huh okay so now I'm going to skip the shading you're going to see it next week here on my channel on Tuesday and um, we're going to bam go right to the end here here it's all shaded what do you think I think it's really neat and now we're going to lighten it up with a couple of pan pastels I'm getting my paper towel ready in case I need to change any of the colors 
you just dab it off on that paper towel that you have set aside. The colors that I used for the pan pastels, this one here is burnt sienna. Then the orange that I use is just a plain old orange and I'll link them below. And then I did pull out my red iron oxide at the end and wow, it just made the pieces pop. I was also going to go ahead and put some cotton stems in that jar and that would have been another stencil by Sean Petit, but I just couldn't do it. There was just too much going on there and I didn't want to cover up any of those falling leaves in the background. So um, next time I will do something coming out of the jar. The jar was fun to do and I think I will uh, work on that uh, maybe in a future video. I'm hoping I can keep up with everything. We've got that new property that we're taking over and um, I'm working on this online class. I'm going to get that done and yeah, it's just a great time of the year. Here I'm using a chalk pastel pencil and it's adding white to all of the items and adding that really cool highlight. I hope you like this piece. I hope that you will comment. I would love for you to share for a friend. Maybe they would like the product project excuse me so much they might subscribe i want to get to 1000 subscribers it is really really hard to do but i'll get there patience 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 so here's where i decided to use some of that red iron oxide and add a little bit of red to the piece Again, I enjoyed how it turned out. I'm going to put that black edge around the piece and I could not decide if I wanted to add a sentiment. I kept thinking I did, but I wasn't sure where I would do it. I didn't want to put it over the middle. So I did add a sentiment over to the right by the birdhouse and it is another stencil by Sean and this one is called Fall Words 1. It's got lots and lots of cool uh, fall sentiments on it. It's a must-have, I feel. And I put the word gather and that's how I was feeling as I was creating this. Um, I know we're not supposed to be gathering with our friends and family because of this COVID stuff going on. I understand that, but that's what fall is about, you know, getting together and spending time before we have to hunker down for the long winter months. Um, I did see some friends on Saturday night, which was great fun. We all keep our distance, you know, we ordered some pizzas and uh, the guys watched football and the girls talked and we just hung out so um, you can gather just do it safely and I hope everyone's staying safe and I do miss all of the people that would take my workshops and classes so I'm hoping maybe this online class we can have some cool discussion and We'll get through this and then maybe next spring we'll all be able to gather again and everybody hopefully will be okay. I hope you liked the piece. I hope you had a good time. And please uh, subscribe, comment, share, comment. I love comments and I comment, I, I read every single one and I do comment back to every single person so yeah and if you're interested in that online class like I said it will be I'd say the first week of October I should have it done I'm working really hard on it 
uh, more realistically, I bet you it'll be the second week of October. So let's not, let's not stress me out, right? So adding that um, edge, and I'm using a black chalk writer for the edge. I'm going to take this piece outside. I'm going to spray it with my acrylic spray and then put on my semi-gloss semi -gloss, um, semi -gloss acrylic protective finish with my brush. Have a great week, and next week we will see you for the shading portion. Thank you. Bye now.